Hey folks, so this video follows immediately from the last video, so you probably should watch the last video and probably some others before that, but I'm not your mom, I'm gonna tell you what to do. On the off chance that you are watching this fresh, I wanna put out a couple of simple disclaimers here. Uh, you'll notice throughout all of the source code here, I've got little notes to myself about when to do things and in what order to show them to you, because I've spent a lot of time figuring out when to do things and when to show them to you, because uh, we're gonna be bouncing all over the source code here, and I, I wanna do that is logically as possible so it's easy for you to follow and you'll also notice that there are sometimes very specific notes about sizes and that's because i've already spent the you know the countless hours figuring out the design already i'm not going to pretend like i'm just figuring it out off the top of my head that oh yeah this needs to be at 875 by 310 uh like i i got notes in here to make this whole thing much more smooth for your viewing pleasure the other thing to note here is that before we even get into any of this i am definitely going to be complaining about pies and bakui but Pi Simple GUI is what makes all this possible and it makes it so much easier than doing it in any other kind of programming language GUI thing that I've ever encountered. Like it really is very, very simple to use, but there's so much documentation that it's it's kind of confusing to follow. I, I don't know which documentation is new, which is old, and I, I've wasted a lot of hours following some old guy that was teaching me to do things the wrong way. And I've, I've become quite frustrated with using it, but I'm gonna show you how to use it correctly and any sort of bitching that I have about it, like I don't want to be taken as any kind of um, reason to be offended if you're one of the maintainers. Honestly, thank you very much for, for making this because this is awesome. So with that said, let's get into it. Right now we've got a really good looking program from what we made in our last video, but right now our status bar is not really a status bar. It's kind of up here just sitting there doing nothing. Let's add a, an actual status bar to our program. So the first thing we're gonna do here is use a new, um, element from PySimpleGUI, which I've imported as SG. So from PySimpleGUI, I'm going to use the um, frame. And inside of this frame, we need to provide a layout, which every layout needs to be a list and probably a list list, yeah, list of lists. <laughs> and this is where we're gonna stuff that text box that we've got right now. So let me grab that text box. There's already a list for a row here in this Get rid of one of these and stuff that in here. And now because this is a layout, we're, or excuse me, now that this is a frame, we can add in some very specific things to this. Like say that I want my relief to be SG relief uh, sunken. So let's see what this is all looking like right now. Oh, <laughs> it would help if I probably stuffed this in somewhere that we can see it. So at the bottom here, we've got our main layout that we're spitting out uh, from our create layout function. And uh, here you see that every list here is a row and all of the elements in our program are just these column panes that are being cycled. I'm turning one off and turning the other on whenever we're moving through the, the app. But we want this status bar to be consistent across the whole app. So I'm adding a new row and this has got to be a list. And now that should work and this this should be yeah okay so we will see this now throughout our whole program it doesn't matter what page we're on we're gonna see it here we're gonna see it in our login we're gonna see it everywhere so let's now make that pretty uh come up here and the first thing i want to do is add some contrast to the way that uh, this is displaying so um, i'm going to change the text color to the background color and the background color to the text color and that oh yeah i need to also get rid of this weird border we got going on. Hold on. Let me split this up so this is easier to follow. So those are all the things going on inside of our text label here. And everything else on this line is going to be all the things we're doing to this frame. And I'm going to uh, make the border width zero on this frame. And uh, let's see what we've got now. All right. So this is looking good, like it's doing what I want it to do, but you see we're, we're like right up against the edge of this. Instead of adding a space to this, let's actually make the, the background of the frame the same color that we're using here, the text color. So Now that gave us just a little bit of extra space here. I wish that there was a way to like put this up against the edge edge entirely like I just cannot figure out if there is a way I've looked all over I couldn't find anybody talking about a way to do this like I've tried setting the padding to zero by zero so that I mean in my mind that's saying 
we should definitely be all the way against the edge. And I think that did actually make a difference there. It does seem to be a little bit close to the edge, but it's not fully on the edge. Now, on the other end of there, we could do a, a couple of different things to push this out. One would be to just make this text label really long and it would stuff this until it get, reaches the end. Another way to do this, though, is to make use of this frame's um, method of expanding, where I can say expand this and expand the X of it and set this to true. Unfortunately, this is not the way PySimple GUI works. I suspect that the reason PySimple GUI doesn't work this way is because this the hidden superpowers underneath it that it's hiding from us require this to happen afterwards. Like this cannot happen while we're declaring this and making this. This has to happen once the window is presented and ready to be worked with. So we need to do that later. We'll worry about that later. I just want to point out that that's the reason we're not doing anything to this now. It's going to look a little goofy, but we will expand this later and it will look better. Uh, so we got our status bar. Let's actually make use of this now because right now it's saying online and that's not particularly helpful. <laughs> Let's take all the, the points in our program where we're trying to communicate anything useful to the uh, user and actually communicate to them using our new status bar here. So that you'll note that the key for this text box is connection status. I'm going to copy that so that we have that in my... Uh, clipboard here and I'm going to create a, um, a status message function which will take in any kind of message and it will update the connection status element with this message. Now this kind of works but it's not going to entirely. We're going to have to come back and fix this. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to skip ahead and say that we we figured that out because we have figured that out. Um, I want to put this in a try and accept so that we'll be able to show you exactly what goes wrong when. Um, but there's going to be a lot of conditions where we're trying to update this message, but that element or the window itself is just not going to be ready. So we need to be prepared for events when the the window itself is just not ready. We're going to get an error message and it's going to look scary. Uh, at first, uh, we're going to get rid of that, but we, we need to be ready to handle those instances where we just cannot update this because it doesn't exist yet or because it's in the middle of a refresh or something like we, we need to handle for that. And the way that we're going to handle for that is to stuff whatever message this is into a global that we're going to save in this. So at the very top of this file, we're creating a message queue global variable here. And now down here in this status message, before it, it hits this thing that's going to definitely cause errors, I'm going to save into this global here, whatever the message is. And now, even if we hit an error and it doesn't work and you know it's, it's going to crap out here, we will have something to recover from. So let's make a DQ message which just returns whatever we've stuffed into that variable. So now we know that this DQ message should always give us whatever the latest message is, right? So it doesn't matter, like if we, uh, a good example is when we're adding a share or something like that. We'll add that and we want to tell the user that we've added that, but we're going to have to rebuild the whole UI in order to show the new share in their list of shares. So when that happens, like when, when is our message saying that you've added a new share actually shown? And there's a lot of conditions where it's going to be weird and strange because we're using um, asynchronous stuff. Like there's a lot of different asynchronous stuff flying all over the place. And we've got a handle for that because there's a lot of different things going on. So where we uh, make this little status bar here, Instead of just saying online, which is not useful, we're going to DQ whatever the current message is. So every time it rebuilds this layout, it's going to ask, okay, what what is the latest message that I've seen? And even if that message did successfully show before, now it'll successfully show again because we've just refreshed and rebuilt it and we've pulled that same uh, thing out of our global variable. So now let's run through our program and try to figure out good places to actually make use of this. Like where do we want to communicate something to the user? So let's uh, go into the networking file here and we created a huge class. It's our connection handler because we're making a, uh, a Dropbox clone called Dripbox that works as a peer to peer network on our local machine. So we, instead of going up to the cloud, it's saving whatever file we want across our local machines here. And 
inside of this, we've got a, a login message where we're the client in the peer-to-peer -peer relationship there. And we want to let our user know that, hey, we've established a new connection to this host. So instead of printing this, let's use the Dripbox GUI status message. And likewise, in our welcome, which in the peer-to-peer -peer relationship, if this is the server and it's accepting a connection from somebody, it is going to want to communicate that as well. So let's say Dripbox GUI status message. I've got a new connection from this hostnet. Now at the bottom of our networking file, we've got a big thing called status update, which is a asynchronous loop where we just keep on looping through to let all of our connected neighbors know, you know who we're connected to and what files we have available to be shared. And right now it's updating status. You see these messages that are going on down here because uh, it happens to be running in the background. Um, it's not helpful to print this out because the user's not going to see this console message. So let's actually give the user some useful information. So here, it's, this loop is going to just run repeatedly and it'll run at whatever rate I'm setting it to. Like right now, it'll run through this loop every minute. Um, this is a good place to say, okay, well, we're online. And I know that we're online because if this state that we're setting here is connected, you'll see that that's what we do when we get a password. We know that we're ready to be connected to and connecting because we've got a password to use in the networking stuff. So we're online and we've got um, this many peers connected. So let's try to remember this phraseology and try to be consistent in our messaging to the user. So whenever we're talking about how many connections we have, we're going to try to use the same convention across. Like it doesn't, this isn't a particularly good way of doing it. It's just, I want to be consistent about how I'm doing it. So over in our internet, when we accept a password, then we're ready to, to connect. So let's set our status message. Oh, whoops. I got to import that first. So, uh, status message is online dash and not connected. Now remember that our status bar thing is gonna be visible across the whole app. So this includes in the login prompt. So let me uh, clear out our password so we'll see the login prompt here. And you see, it, it's not showing us anything because when it's dequeuing this message, there's nothing to dequeue. Like we haven't told it what to, to show here. So uh, let's tell it what to show by adding in a status message of offline. Now. This is definitely going to break things because at the point that this is happening, this is way before our window is is being created. So this is definitely going to break. Uh, let's let's see how it breaks. Okay, so as promised, um, you know it's saying that uh, it couldn't even find the window that we're we're trying to interact with, but it it went on because we, we did a uh, uh, try accept there. And because we put a message in to be dequeued, it was able to dequeue it in the GUI construction when that happened, because you see this create layout, that's when that happened and it, it dequeued the message that we saved. And there we go, we got our offline. Um, we should also probably do one for online. Uh, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, yeah, let's, let's grab exactly the way that we said this here. So here in our main UI loop where we've got our button logic, I'm checking to see if they've got a password that they've given us and we're setting our state to connected. So let's set our status message to reflect that we've received a password. Because right now, if I if I connect now, like if I save this, it's still offline. It'll eventually swap over to, uh, you know, whatever the update status is going to show it. But like, let's, we should have an immediate thing that the user sees. Oh, great. I'm online. This worked. Um, so let's, that's what this should do. Let's test that now. Right, give it a password. And all right, great. It went from offline to online, not connected. Perfect. So still in our main button UI logic here, uh, I want to add a message that will tell the user, okay, we've gotten your instruction to add a share. And if this works, we're going to get a, a true from it that is successfully done all the caching and stuff. And we're ready to share this file. So let's let the user know that um, new file has been successfully cached for sharing. 
we've got a, a couple of issues that we need to address here. The first is that um, this rebuild UI that's currently in this um, is redundant. So the way that this is working is we're we're creating this cache, we're doing all these things, and we want to make sure that we're doing this correctly. So we, we're waiting for it and ifing it. Uh, so when it happens, we wanted to rebuild the UI in order to show the change to the user. Because in the last episode, we explicitly say in the add share function that once you're doing all this and you're done and you've inserted it in the database, we need to reload that from the database into the memory. And if we give it a true here, it automatically rebuilds the UI. So that was redundant. We don't need to do that anymore. But now, as you see here, this is going to break things. So let me show you how this breaks things. Um, we're still not handling for that, uh, so that's, that's going to be a problem, but we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. Um, let's add a new thing to share. Uh-oh. So now we've got this message, and if you saw the last uh, video, you know that this is lying to us. It's saying that uh, all we need to do is add finalize equals true to our window, and then we will be able to perform these operations on things that don't exist yet. Um, because this is what it's saying. It's unable to complete operation on element with key connection status. That's our status bar thing here. Um, we cannot perform these operations until the, the window is fully you know, rendered and finalized and all this. And supposedly adding finalize equals true is supposed to solve this problem and all of our other problems, but it doesn't. Uh, this is a really teachable moment. And I want to explain why this is happening because it looks like we're waiting until this is done, right? Like if this is done, there's that, we don't move it past and wait until it's done. And part of that whole process was that we said to rebuild the UI, right? Well, we, we actually run into a race condition. So let me jump back to, uh, where were they on that? Oh yeah, the add share here. Um, the way that the reload shares goes into this rebuild UI, it, it should be, you know, just a straight procedural thing because this is not asynchronous. But it seems to be like, and I don't even know how, how to explain why this is going wrong, but it does go wrong and it goes wrong consistently. Like, this is always going to go wrong. And we need to handle for those kinds of weird, inconsistent things. That's just the, the nature of the beast. When you're working with all this stuff, like the asynchronous stuff could be going on in a weird way and, and just hitting the non asynchronous stuff. And you, you just gotta be ready for this and you gotta handle for it. So in our status message here, I'm going to cheat. Um, <laughs> The, the thing that makes the determination of whether or not to show this pop-up is basically just checking, does this thing, whatever the hell this is, if this thing has a, oh, has a widget, then it's fine and it'll let it go through. But if the widget is none, then it pops up the scary thing here and screws with our users. So by doing the same check that it's checking, I can interrupt, I can get in front of it. So we don't even try to use this update thing unless there is a widget here. Um, so this is going to solve one of our problems, but it's gonna create a new one. I put that in the, <laughs> put that in the wrong place here. Uh, pull this back just a, That wasn't the, the problem I was trying to show you. All right, so it, it worked. Our try and accept just completely caught it and we can handle for this now to just suppress this because we are, you know, like it's not breaking our program so we're not worried about that anymore. So accept attribute error, we can just pass. So now when we run this, okay, we, we're online, not connected. That's the message we're expecting to see. Let's now add a, a file that we want to share here. Uh huh. That's weird. It's saying online, not connected. So <laughs> this is the, the error I was intending to show you. Um, this is that race condition again. It's happening in a weird way where we are expecting this DQ message thing to all be happening. Like, like when it's rebuilding this and reshowing this to add this new share here, it should be pulling whatever we've stuffed into the message queue, right? Like we're, we're doing that as the first step. It doesn't matter if it screws up. That's the first step. So when it rebuilds this, it should be 
getting the right thing from that. It should say, hey, we, we did the connection or we, we did the caching that you wanted, but it's not. <laughs> so we need to make another way for this to be updated in the event that we, we run into these weird race conditions with the asynchronous stuff. So since this is a problem between a procedural function and an asynchronous function kind of colliding at the wrong time, we need to try to create some way for a asynchronous function to catch up to this and and fix the problem uh, for us. And we're going to do that with an asynchronous function called uh, delayed DQ. And its whole job is just to you know, do this update with whatever is in the message queue. But we want to really, really be sure that this is definitely going to have a place for us to stuff this in or else we're just going to create the same problem over and over again. So let's make another asynchronous process uh, called check window. And we're basically going to do the same thing that we're doing here where we're checking to see if the widget exists. But we're going to do that with our main panel. It's, our, it's pane main. And we're we're basically doing the, the same test that that uh, scary pop-up was doing. So um, while this is none, well, then we know that the window's not ready. So we're just going to uh, do a uh, await async IO sleep zero. And that's to just say, hey, back out, do anything else that needs to happen, and then come back to me and we'll check in this while loop again until we eventually do get a... <laughs> A widget here and then we can move on and return true so anywhere now in our program that we absolutely need to wait until we've got a working uh, UI we can just do an await check window and this will happen now uh, it's, it's as simple as that because nothing happens after an await until that's satisfied uh, I realize that now I'm saying that that does conflict with the fact that all of these things that are going on in AdShare, including rebuilding the UI, should happen before we hit the status message. <laughs> but uh, so let's let's make use of this delayed queue by going up into our status message. And we don't care if it's it worked or not. We always want it to try to do this delayed queue. And the reason for that is it could successfully work, and we just happen to be rebuilding it later, and we want to you know repopulate it with the correct uh, queue message. Um, you know, there's a lot of different ways we're going to come at status messages. So no matter what we're doing, we're always going to want to, uh, async IO get event loop and create a task that does this delayed DQ. So even if it works, if it doesn't work, it's always going to try to wait until this window is, um, uh, ready for us. And then it's going to stuff in whatever the message is. So this should solve the problem for, oh, fuck. All right, I just encountered one error and that led me to find another error. I typoed here. I typed pain main because I'm using a PySimple GUI pain here, but I'm calling all the panes panels. And so I, I forgot to put the L at the end there. And while I was doing that, I realized that um, I forgot to change the print message here in our status update of the networking file. Um, change that from a print to the, actually do a status message. So the online peers connected should show up. We should have a working program now. Yay, okay, so let's share another file and see if that does correctly status update for us here. Right now, online zero peers. Yay, new file has been successfully cached for sharing. All right, that's perfect. But you'll notice that as I've been screwing around with here and I'm doing all these d uh, testing ones, um, the, this is getting really crazy long. Like we're not telling our program how long this can get and it, it's just gonna keep on going. Like it will literally just keep on going because we as programmers need to specify, hey, stop, <laughs> like stop at this point. Um, you know, we, you might be expecting it to have a scroll bar and in fact, we're gonna add a scroll bar, but we have to add it. We can't expect the program itself to know that we need a scroll bar here. We have to explicitly say, all right, this is getting a little long. We need a scroll bar here. So let's do that next. So in our GUI, if we go up to our layout where we're creating these shares. Um, yeah, here's our share list. And we need to, do a little check here to see if our share list is getting too long. Um, I'll wrap this in a length. If that's greater than seven, 
then we're going to need a scroll bar. And you see, I've got all these notes here for specifically the, the dimensions, but I'll explain what this is doing. I'm um, creating a dictionary here that's going to have all of the properties I need it to have when it's going to have a scroll bar and when it's not going to have a scroll bar, because it obviously doesn't need a scrollable true if it's not supposed to have a scroll bar. So uh, here I'm setting the size that is appropriate for a scroll bar. And then I'm adding a scrollable and saying that's true. And I'm explicitly stating that I want a vertical scroll only. And don't try to give me a horizontal one. But if it's if the share list is less than seven, we don't need any of this. And we want our size to actually be a little bit wider because this size that I've figured out here is taking into account the additional size of the scroll bar. So if we don't need a scroll bar, we need to increase the size of this whole like, column that we're going to stuff this into. So that needs an 892 by 310. So the height stays the same, but the width is a little bit longer. Now, we're, we're stuffing this into a pane, and panes don't have uh, scroll bars, so we're just going to change this now to a... Uh, a column, which is going to break all that, but that's okay. We need it anyhow. And here I'm going to unpack the share scroll. And it's complaining over here uh, now because this um, needs to be a list of lists. So there we go. And now I, I'm going to add in some padding. I think I did like 10 by 5 here. It is 10 by 5. It's really important to get these paddings correct, as you'll see here in a second here. Um, so yay, we've got a scroll bar, and it's working with my mouse. Like, I'm using my mouse scroll wheel, and it's going up and down, and you see, that is much nicer. Now, I want to make sure at this point, because we're going to be using, we're going to be reusing a lot of this code, um, let's make sure that everything is looking good. The dimensions should be consistent, so when it, it doesn't matter, like, what page I'm on, if I'm over at the share, or if I'm on this, the, the app shouldn't be resizing. That, that looks bad. You see, it's doing this right now. I happen to know exactly what's wrong here, but you see how that, that doesn't look great. Well, let's make it consistent. So the, the problem here was that in that uh, share pane, I need to add a little spacer here. So I'm just putting in an extra little label. It's like totally empty, nothing in it at all. And now we have a consistent height and width in our program. So that looks so much better, right? Like, this is looking like a much more professional app just by not resizing all the time. All of this is taking way longer than I expected. Um, I, I think I should probably cut this one here. Um, in the next one, we're going to do even more stuff. We're going to add some logic to our buttons and extra stuff. Like We're going to keep on building up this asynchronous GUI and um, making our app look really nice and pretty. Uh, thank you very much to my Patreon patrons for making these videos possible. Take it easy, folks.